What up, everybody? Yeah, we made it. I'm Nolan Ma. You're there. You're fully there, right? I'm here. I'm there. My father told me when I was a little kid: no matter where you're at, you're always there. Uh, that's actually a very wise word. Yeah, he said it when he was drunk, so it had to make sense. Well, um, well, that's even wiser words. Hold on, where's my notepad? Yo, Sin, I got a new name for you, bro. Oh, what's that? Sin Fantastic. Hey, yo, Sin Fantastic. He's a plastic. Gonna take villains down to magic. Yo, Sin. Yo, Sin Fantastic is the best streamer on Twitch. If you guys ain't following Sin Fanta, aka Sin Fantastic. What's the matter with you? What are you doing, huh? What's the matter? What is Rocky Three was a good movie. Oh, I love me some Rocky Three. It's oh. a good movie, yeah. Oh, way, oh, hey, oh, hey. I'm so excited. Bro, they didn't think we were gonna make it to episode five. I didn't want to tell you in public, but people were like, yo, yeah, I gotta make it episode five. They, they didn't think we were going to make it, huh? They didn't wow. think we were going to make it. They didn't think we were going to make it. I heard a lot of people talking about us. Shijiro Miyamoto was like, they're not going to make it. Um, you know, Keji Nifune was like, they're not going to make it. Uh, uh, Hideo Kojima was like, they're not going to make it. They're not going to make it. You know, uh, we proving them wrong, bro. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yeah, they didn't think we were going to make it, bro. Wait, 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 wait. I need to know, though. Did Reggie believe in us? Reggie always did. Come on, Reggie's my uh, Reggie's my dad. Uh, Reggie's yeah, my dad, not, bro. I love uh, I love Reggie. I freaking love that's Reggie. What I cared about. <laughs> His body was ready for the podcast. That's what I cared about. But you know, we have a we have a new section that uh it's called the We Care. because <laughs> uh, we don't. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't care. We, we don't care. Uh, so we, we're going to expand on this uh, section. Uh, you know, so the more time goes on. But, you know, there's a, there's a game we care about that's coming out on uh, cloud only. Why? Uh, it's called uh, Hitman 3. Why couldn't it be on Sephiroth only? Why has it got to be cloud only? I don't understand this. Why? I don't, I don't understand, understand this. I don't understand this. What is this game about, though? I mean, do we need to know? Is it? Hit, hit man is it like you kill stuff i guess listen i'm gonna get real serious with you i i've watched people play hitman since like the ps2 days i've never cared about hitman um i guess the one benefit of this is that it's coming to switch and more triple a games are coming to switch like few games that we didn't think were possible on the switch are coming it's not a game i would get but you know maybe it's good for somebody out there that wants to kill people some people like killing people it, 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 we're gonna we're gonna have to cut that out because you know they might think though. <laughs> I don't like doing it. You know what I'm saying? I haven't killed anybody since 1984 in the meme wars. Well, you're so young. You know, I I I come from the 1920s. So, so we talked about this in episode one. Yeah, you know. Sh all right, you know what? Let's go on to. <laughs> Yeah, we, we one. About this so apparently we, we we're supposed to care. We're so we're supposed to care uh, about uh, we can't. No, we can't. We can't. We care deeply, deeply. We care real, real deeply about uh, racing games. Uh, there's a game called Rise Race to the Future. Uh, has gameplay coming out for the Switch. Uh, people Rise, still play racing. Games? Rise ra wait, Race to the Future. Listen, uh, shout out to my brother DX the Great. I love that guy. He told me something about racing games that will make me never play a racing game again. He was like, when you play racing games, you're pretty much paying sixty dollars just to hold the X button down, <laughs> or whatever, or whatever ignition button it is. Because <laughs> that's pretty much it. You just pay money to hold the button down for like five okay. minutes right. at a time. And uh, <laughs> but this does bring me into a good into a good thought because I'm like. 
I wish Nintendo would bring back F Zero. I know it's not gonna happen. I know it's not gonna happen. I know already. I... But um, <laughs> but uh, I I will say that, you know what I'm saying? If 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 somewhere in their heart they could find uh, a a little ounce of sympathy for the F Zero franchise, bring it back, man. Bring it back and 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 yo, let man, come on, like let's let's play some F Zero. F Zero is a one racing game. I would I would pay for if it came out. Bring it back. If it came out on the Switch. Even if it was a port of uh, the GameCube GX version. Did we talk about this earlier? Why I think it would be very difficult for them to do it? No, no, no. What do you, what, what do you think? What do you think? So, so the only way they would be able to do it is essentially if they edited um, some of the franchise's uh, uniqueness. Because the problem is that when F-Zero GX came out, uh beforehand before gx it was just a racing game it had a little bit of quirkness but it wasn't as deep as gx when gx came out it had this really deep pocketed uh conversations that nintendo would never allow um and deep pocketed stories that nintendo would never allow back then and so maybe now they'll allow it maybe now they would but maybe. they would have to some things out. They definitely would. They would have changed a little bit. I mean, I know Sega developed the GX game. Um, I also know they, they leaned heavy on the anime side of things, which I don't know if Nintendo never really... I don't think they have any games that like lean so heavy into the anime like themes like that. GX definitely did. Um, but, I mean, that's my, that's my dream wish. That's like my... I'm going to throw a quarter in the water fountain at the mall. To get that game to come out HD on the Switch, 60 frames per second, uh, 12 players online or something like that. I know they can't do 30, but 12 mm-hmm. players online. That's that's you, what. You just put in my brain. I'm trying to think if there's anything like Nintendo anime, re- but no, realistically, it's usually a third I mean, party. You have yeah, you have Zen- you have Xenoblade, but that's that's um, Monolith Soft, but that's it. I don't think there's anything else that Nintendo makes is like specifically. Very anime influenced like that. Oh, yeah, okay. Except for one title that we're gonna talk about later. <laughs> Super Saiyan Cats over here. Okay, cat, cat, we're cat. getting there. We're getting there though. Um. So, uh, I I, I know I put this in there for for a reason. Uh, we're just gonna go in over it. But I've been playing Doom Eternal for a while now, and on the Switch. <gasps> what? 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 Yeah. What? what? <laughs> Wait, wait, listen, listen to me. All right, before you go around, um, uh, Digital Foundry put out a video, and uh, they were just essentially discussing how the, the the Switch can actually run the Maternal to the point that the Fidelity is worth buying it. Um, I've been enjoying it. It runs really, really well. Uh, there's some cutbacks, of course. Um, you know, it, it, you can tell. Uh, the, the corners they have to cut, but I will say that it runs even better, it, and even in portable mode, you can enjoy it fully. Um, and it runs at constant thirty frames. <laughs> so you know, for those of you that are out there hesitating to get it because they're like, oh, well, no, I'm a console player. I'm a PC plug. Get it on Switch. Don't worry. It'll run just fine. If your only option uh, is Switch, get it on the Switch. If you're into first-person shooters. I'm not really big on first-person shooters, but I will play Doom. Just because it doesn't play like Call of Duty. It's more action-heavy than um, most yeah, other first-person yeah. shooters. I, I like that about Doom and Wolfenstein. That they, they lean heavy on the action. like no, uh, run and gun and just... Yeah. Keep- They're like classic shooting games. Like... Like like Doom, like how Doom was on the back in the day on the P on the old PC and the Super Nintendo and whatever else it came out on. So I, I appreciate the Doom franchise a lot more than any other like first person shooter out there. Doom and Wolfenstein, I, li- I like both those games. They've been on my to playlist for a while. I have to actually buckle down and play them, and I might play it on the Switch. Yeah, Wolfenstein uh, two, right? Uh, two and one, I think, are on the Switch. Both of them. Yeah, but not Young Blood. You don't no, want to do that one. Well, the, the, is it DLC? It's no, no it's, it's the one that came out after Wolfenstein 2 and it was trash. 
Oh yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> Thanks for telling me. I would have bought that shit. Like, oh man, what the jazz? No, but uh, in conclusion, um, it, I, I, I must admit, um, Doom on the Switch. I don't know. Look, shout out to Panic Button. Whatever you guys did, it, it, it runs well. It definitely does. They're the guys that ported it. Yeah, Panic Button is the the company that um, Bethesda and ID Software put to do it. To, to I like those companies. I like those companies that are only there to port games. They don't get enough credit, and people don't uh, aren't fanboys of them. But yo, these these companies that are built just to make games for specific consoles, to make ports of games, they do a really good job in optimizing these games for the console they know how to optimize for. They yeah. they deserve a, a big. I remember on the Game Boy Advance, there were so many ports of PS2 games that looked amazing on the Game Boy Advance. And people are like, what the hell's going on? How did they pull this off? But then there's the travesty, such as art on the Switch, which oh. we won't talk about. Oh, my God. Uh, shout, out to, shout out to my brother, Jake Kidoski. He loves Ark. I don't know what it is, but... Uh, Wait, what? Well, he likes that? I can't. No, not likes. Not likes. Loves it. And I'm like, I don't know how, but... Tell him to play around. it on the Switch. No, to each their own. I'm not gonna judge. I don't judge people, man. I don't judge. No, I I don't know if you know much, but um, you know, th- there's companies that have gotten it down. Um, uh, porting games on the Switch and you know, just porting games in general. I know you got downgrade, downscale, whatever, and it still runs fine. But Ark, if you ever get a chance to Google it, it just just the travesty, the atrocity. It's almost like they took the game. And said, "You see this file here? Let's not compress. Just toss it on the switch and hope it runs." Uh, I would never play. I, I respect. So, my, I respect my body. Yeah, man. yeah. I respect my body, man. I respect you, it too much. You respect your body that much? Yeah, I really do. I respect my body a lot. <laughs> Reggie, Reggie, Fusion may talk to you that. Yeah, man. Yo, you guys don't understand. Reggie's my hero, bro. Like, I fucking love that guy. I'm here to kick ass and take names. I, I love Reggie a lot. And yeah, my body's ready, but it's not ready for Ark. <laughs> it's not ready for Ark. I'm so, oh, I'm so excited for Ark. Oh. oh, man. Oh, man. So you want to hit us with the next uh, with the next topic that we got lined up? Bowser's here? Fury, bro. Okay, so I'm watching this. I think it came out, the, the trailer, the trailer came out as soon as I woke up that morning. It was the first thing I saw on YouTube. I wake up and my routine is, all right, let me turn on YouTube, see what got announced, see what's out there. Uh, that was the first thing I saw. <laughs> and at first I'm like, I'm looking at it. I'm like, yo, is this Mario Odyssey DLC? Did you think that? I was like, what? Yeah, for, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, what's going on? Because I'm like, yo, this is like open world. This is like... This is not like the linear style of uh, Mario 3D World, which I don't have a problem with. I like, I actually like 3D Land on the 3DS. That was my favorite 3DS game. But I'm looking yeah. at this and I'm like, they really took elements from um, Odyssey and put it into um, um, 3D World. Because I remember a lot of people complained about 3D World. They were like, Nintendo's being lazy. They just want to make 3D World and... And, uh, uh, you know, Mario, new Super Mario Bros. games, they don't want to make an open world Mario game anymore. That was a common uh, criticism during the Wii U and 3DS era. Yes. But I'm looking at Bowser's Fury and I'm like, this is amazing, bro. So you have baby Bowser or Bowser Jr. That's his name, right? Bowser Jr. Following you no, around. We're gonna, no, we're going to call him Baby Mark. <laughs> he does look like me. So baby yeah. Marv is following you around in the clown helicopter thing. And and uh, you're in like an open world thing where Bowser is always gonna be able to chase you, and he's in this enraged Giga Bowser form. Correct me if I'm mistaken, but they're they're literally calling him Giga Bowser from like Smash Bros, right? You know, they're in Japan they're calling him God Slayer Bowser. You're kidding! That I'm is serious. the most epic. That is epic. That is epic. That is epic. And apparently, it's going to be like a chase down game. So you're going to be running away from him while you're in your base form. But when you get to the cat bell, you're going to turn into a Super Saiyan cat and fight him one on one, Dragon Ball Z style. 
which is what I mentioned no. earlier about anime influence in, in Nintendo I, games. I hinder them, hinder him, and then continue about your business. I, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna work. I don't know what's the the length of the game because from the from what I saw, it's a giant open world. Um, and you, I guess once you kill, I don't know if once you kill Bowser, uh, the game ends or if, uh, it's like a constant, you put him back to sleep when you fight him as super Saiyan cat Mario. Um, I don't really, it, w you talk now. <laughs> so, 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 so <laughs> super Mario 3d world was a game that already existed. Um, and it has a uh, Bowser's fury added to it. Yes. So what, yes, I'm yes. Assuming, what, I'm, what I'm assuming is it's that it's. 3D world, you get to play to 3D world, and and or you get to have Bowser's Fury on the side or play Bowser's Fury after the fact, after you save 3D world's land. I'm not entirely certain from what it seems to me. It seems like it's just his own separate entity thing. I think so, from, too. I think that, too. Because the engine looks different, it runs different, and 3D world was more pseudo-linear it wasn't um, open world like Odyssey. It was more like like old classic Mario games where you had a path, you would take the path, and then you get to the end. Yes. Um, so I'm I'm pretty sure that that's pretty that that's what it is. Um, but I must admit, uh, Bowser's looking scrumptious. Like Yo, he, he's the most. That's the most evil list I've ever seen Bowser look. Bowser looks like a kaiju, and that's what he really is. He's a kaiju monster, but in this game, he's really really kaiju. I, I I remember in Galaxy One when they showed him big and Galaxy Two as well. I was not intimidated at all, except for I was like, "How is Mario gonna beat him?" In this time, for the first time, I legitimately saw Bowser and was like, "Whoa!" Whoa. And I'm, I'm, at my age, at my age, I was like, "Whoa!" Whoa. At the end, they show you know they show Mario just like. <laughs> Oh, you think uh, you good? And then he just goes, he's a Super Saiyan cat. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. So now we. <laughs> the music was good too. Did you listen to the music during the trailer? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Why are we not talking about that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, mu the music was so good. Yeah, yeah. I, it I, yeah. I, I, I wasn't ever it wasn't on my radar at all mario 3d world i was like I, I didn't play it on the wii u i don't plan on playing it on the switch now it has my curiosity i, st I still don't know how i would buy it i don't regularly go out and buy mario games because i feel like somebody will give it to me one day or something or i'll play it on a, on a collection one day eventually but now, now it has my attention at first you had my curiosity but now, now you have my attention no i i agree i um Every time there's been a Mario game that's came out, uh, a girl has gotten it for me. Wait a minute. Uh, so, hey. you know. Hey. Uh, hey, Sin Fanta. You want this Mario game, baby? Take oh. this Mario game, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I've, uh, you know, I'm. Is the first time since Odyssey. Mind you, Odyssey had me definitely excited, but I still didn't want to spend that cash on it. Um, because the problem is that uh, Mario games tend to be one and done. And I'm not, that's not, I'm not saying that it's bad by any means. It's just you play it, you beat it, there's nothing else after. Um, agreed, agreed. But, but then Odyssey changed that. Odyssey was the first game where you wanted to keep going you wanted more moons you wanted more everything like you just you just want to keep exploring so i don't know how i feel about this fury i might have to get it because it just looks really good i'll want i'll wind up uh getting it from somebody <coughs> i've had every mario game i just never paid for them because i have, usually have a friend with a switch and he usually like gives me his mario games when he's done with them but um i'll wind up playing it eventually but it looks good. I will say that Nintendo didn't get for all the critics like Nintendo wasn't lazy with this. It was not just a straight port, um, you know, so take talk, talk your trash somewhere else or whatever. I I feel I feel like um, and this is a concern that I'll bring up real quick. I, you know, people are not talking about the change of the old guard. Um, and during Super Mario Nintendo World's revealed, you know, the, the, the the theme park 
Uh, Miyamoto made it abund abundantly clear that he's stepping away from video games. You know, he's passed the torch down to a younger staff, um, uh, as well as uh, uh, here he had already done it with Anuma with the Legend of Zelda, and uh, so there's a lot of franchises that he's passed down. Listen, Cyclops. That was Cyclops <laughs> and, uh, for a second. <laughs> for those that that can't see the the the, the video format. Uh, we got we got Mark turning into Cyclops. Just be careful. It's gonna happen randomly every now and then. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the Miyamoto has proteges that he's passed on the torch to. He's passed on uh, Zelda to Anuma. I mean, he's passed on uh, who, who, God knows what else. I don't know who's who's directing Pikmin nowadays, but I'm pretty sure it's not him. And um, yeah, where were you going with that? <laughs> the, the point I was trying to make is is damn, I can't remember who the Pikmin name is. I remember later. Um. The point I'm trying to make is the you know the guard is being passed, um, and I'm not trying to sound negative. I'm just trying to sound concerned because remember every iteration that Nintendo has made for video games, they've been innovative so much so that the other companies has have had to copy Nintendo. PlayStation, Sony has copied Nintendo. Microsoft has copied Nintendo. Sega has copied Nintendo. Mm -hmm. In one way or another. They've copied Nintendo, so I've always feared that they, and it, it's gonna happen. And I, you know, you can't negate it because to, you know progress can't continuously keep going that quick when it comes to video games, uh, where they're just gonna hit that snag and they're gonna go, okay, we got the technology, we got, we've tried every angle, um, so let's just upgrade it instead of alter. And you know, when that happens, I want to know when where Nintendo goes from there. That's the curiosity that I'm at. Um, I didn't think after Galaxy that they'd be able to do something, and then they did Odyssey, and now after Odyssey, I don't know what else they would do with Mario. So that's my point that I'm trying to make. I kind of feel like they'll always have an idea for something new, because I think my Miyamoto installed in Nintendo's culture to always come up with an idea first before you make a game, <coughs> like a new idea. Like I feel okay. like. I feel like that's instilled in Nintendo's game uh, development philosophy. I don't think they're gonna they're gonna walk away from that just because my model retired. But at the same time, yeah, it, it is a possibility where it's gonna be like all new young guys are just gonna wanna, you know, let's just make the graphics better and release a new version. I think that happened for Zelda for a while, where like yeah, they, yeah. they didn't have yeah, new yeah. ideas; they just changed the graphics and the dungeons a little bit. Um, right. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that, that is true. Where we go next? But I thought that was Smash Brothers. I really thought after Smash 4, I was like, what could they possibly do next? This is the best roster we've ever had. The best gameplay we ever had. And I was wrong. So, I mean, I don't doubt them anymore. If you go watch that first podcast that we did together, you remember me, you, um, Captain Beatdown, and uh, Lady Luck, Bermuda Boy? Yeah. I was the one saying, if you watch it again, I was the one saying... I hope they just port Smash 4 because I don't think there's anything new they can do with Smash. And I was wrong. I was wrong. The reason why I, I didn't feel that way back then as much as I do now is because I still saw um, venues of potential, uh, in particular with Smash, simply because since I've had so many years of all the platforms of Smash, um, I could, in hindsight, look at how Melee used to run and how Brawl used to run. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw Smash 4, it was more of an incremental growth rather than uh, exponent, like just exponential. And so I always thought they could maybe go one last step. Now it's when I'm actually like, where do they go? Because Sakurai clearly is adding almost every character possible. And in the next game, what are they going to do? Remove characters or... I, I I will give them the benefit of that. I feel like they'll they'll impress us all. I feel like Smash is gonna either that or they just keep updating Smash Ultimate. But I think, like I said, it's in their philosophy to keep doing something new. And yeah, so we'll yeah. see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so the, the, like uh, okay. So th this next topic, I don't I didn't really I don't want to really go too much into details, um, because there's been recent updates on it. Um, but. Uh, Game Explain has had uh, a pace. Uh, exp they've been exposed essentially by doing uh, certain uh, <laughs> scrupulous circumstances. I'm not gonna drill into Game Explain. There was an update 
um, and there was progress be, uh, made by uh, people and staff within uh, Game Explain. There's still things that are not confirmed and whatnot, but what I will say is that uh, overall, within the gaming development scene within companies, and this is for everybody that doesn't understand how making video game works, I feel as though we need a conversation about change. We need a conversation about uh, better pay and less crunch time. That's the only two topics that I'm going to get out of this because this is like as we were coming up with the, uh, you know, the show today, uh, the story changed. And so, you know, there's much there's not much I can grab onto until I update myself. But there's still the, the, the perspective of people are within uh video game uh, companies where they're being pushed with crunch time more more in particular in certain countries where they go hey this game needs to be out now i don't care if it's not done we'll patch it later <clears throat> cyberpunk uh you know so the point is we need more pay for these kind of people if you're going to have them in crunch time and if not delay the game game uh game purchasers are not you know we we the fans we're not going to go anywhere if you delay a game Take your time like Nintendo does to make a proper game. Making patches afterwards does not excuse it at all. <laughs> and that's all I got to say about that. Game Explain is the YouTube channel, right? Game Explain is it's a uh, it's a company in and of itself. Um, they they have a variety of venues that they they uh, they do, but. The, the concept was that they had their employer employees on their uh, uh, very screwed in the circumstances getting paid a little amount, very, very little amount of money for a huge crunch time. And not even five hours ago, I believe, uh, the one of the top leaders of the company agreed to make changes, and they did. But that doesn't excuse the fact that this is still allowed across the board with companies and video game entities. Okay, so Game Explain, um, I I watch them like every day on YouTube. I I I watch every video they put out almost. They're like probably my most watched YouTube channel because they they specifically cover Nintendo news and they do really good breakdowns of uh when a Nintendo trailer drops. Um, I did watch the video that you linked there and I saw that um. They were saying they were getting paid as little as a dollar an hour to play some games for reviews. They were they were getting getting paid way less than the guy at the top. OK, so what I will say is um, it's 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 a business. I, I will almost say, yeah, yeah, uh, there, it is kind of conniving the way they operated, the way they were paying uh, people at the bottom way less than the people at the top. But I will also say that in business the guy at the top will always make at least 10 times more than you yes and that if he has if you don't negotiate some kind of um deal where um you're getting paid correctly right at the beginning you're not getting paid what you think you deserve then a person at the top will always I won't say take advantage, but I will say they will always look for a way for the company or the business itself to make uh, more profit by paying someone less at the bottom. So yeah, that's, yep. what I'm not saying, I'm not condoning what they did, but I will say that it's not necessarily only a thing of the guy at the top is a prick. I will say that the, the people at the bottom need to educate themselves just as much as the guy at the top and say, I'm going to look into how much I deserve to be making for what I'm doing by comparing um, what other people in my industry are making um, doing the same job that I'm doing. Which is what he did, by the way. The guy but did it. He did it after the fact from what I believe, because in the beginning, he he agreed to what he was getting paid because he wouldn't have started the job there if he didn't uh, like the pay. Is that correct? Yeah. Am I wrong about that? I don't. I don't no, know. I don't know the inside. Out. I know. I know Andre. I know that. I know the personalities there at Game Explained, and I. I do. I do like them. Like I really do like the like everyone there, and um, like I said, I think 
that you will always 90% of the time get screwed over by any corporation, any business. If you don't educate yourself on what you deserve. Yes. I will say that, but I don't condone what they do at the top. No, uh, no. So for, those that, for those that are not understand, you know, for those that are not understanding where Marv is coming from, understand that business and, and, and personal feelings is, uh, uh, do not mix. Um, and so, you know, there's a different, there's a difference uh, between, you know, business marketing and, and, and etiquette and then personal etiquette and, um, if you go into a company seeking X amount of money, you will get uh, X amount of money rather than studying how much that company is willing to pay and then negotiate. Exactly. Uh, and so I will agree with that. And you got to fight also- for yourself. You have to fight for yourself. Yes. Yeah. Like That's just 100 percent in every situation at any business, at any job. You have to say, I deserve more. And if they don't want to give you more, you got to be out. Uh, I think that what these guys did by exposing the company is actually good because now the guy at the top has to be like Andre, who's the head of Game Explain, has to actually change his structure because it became public. You know what I mean? So, so the, the only thing that I would say that was bad, because, again, I'm in agreement with you, um, you know, the, the pay is going to be there's going to be variables, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh the only thing that that needed to be changed was uh, due due dates of payment, which seems to be that. Uh, yeah, was having- I, I remember that being an issue too. Yeah, so that that needs to be like okay, well he he apparently did. This is why like I'm I'm hesitant to talk about it because a lot of change was already made uh, as of today. Um, he said an automatic uh, enrollment uh, payment uh, option, <clears throat> and then just renegotiation. Of the amount of work that needs to be put out versus how much you get paid. That's exactly. the one thing that everything else. I don't want to hear complaints. You should. You're gonna get paid, um, in accordance with how business works. But don't crunch time. That's the. That's always my one fear. That's with one thing too. That's one thing. This should never be done. I think he also told them that they can't. That that they, they have deadlines so that they can't do their own things on YouTube and Twitch. They're like, no, this needs to get done, so you can't go do your own thing. I think that's also wrong. So he made a lot of he made a lot of mis- mistakes. He made a lot of mistakes, but but remember, at the bottom, when you're the little guy, you gotta kind of pretend you're the you're the big guy. You gotta kind of yeah. go into things with that men- with the mentality that, hey, um, I'm important. I deserve more. You give me more, or I'm out. So I I, I agree with both sides. I agree with. Exposing the company because yes, uh, they people should know, and this is how you change things. And two, I agree with the guy at the top needs to change his ways because you, you're not gonna get away with this, bro. Like, you, what, who are you? What's the matter with you? Rocky Three is a good movie. What do you think this is? Oh, <laughs> come on. I'm gonna so much. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, well, we'll revisit this topic um, because it, it just got so quickly updated. Right when we were doing the show, so. I bet, I bet, I bet. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I will say this is a good learning uh, uh, tip coming from uh, you know Marv here, and, and more so him than I because he know he knows more about business than I do. But guys, make you, sure you, you know about business. You know you know to beat people up. That's 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 a business. This is currency okay. right here. You got to fight for yourself. I, I know business, but I try to keep my mouth shut because you know more. Uh, but I will say that, uh, um, you know, in conclusion, just understand that companies have different ways of working. And um, the cancel culture concept is something that we need to continuously discuss and stop pushing forward that agenda. Yeah. This will never get done. We're not going to cancel a business because they had bad practices. We want them to improve their business because you got to think about it. People will lose their jobs and not have no job if you cancel an entire business. You don't want everybody to go broke. You just want them to improve. You want them to get better. You want human beings have to learn and adapt. Yes. So yeah, that's that that's my position on it. Fight for yourself. Fight, fight. For those listening, uh, are you realizing that uh, Marvis and Fanta actually have brains? Oh my god, that's crazy. Sin fantastic, baby. That's sin fantastic. 
that's gonna be a line now. People are gonna start saying that, but like, bro, that's sin fantastic. Yeah, that's gnarly tastic. Right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Did you um? I put this in here just because I wanted to talk. This to is you. a this is a fun topic. I like this topic. Um, listen, Metro Prime Four. So we're gonna have predictions, huh? We're gonna be we're gonna be thinking what the game is gonna be, or or when it's gonna come out. What what, I, what were your thoughts with this? Bro, I, I need this game. Look, let me tell you something. I've been looking through speculations and forums, and by the way, I own the biggest uh, <laughs> Facebook Smash Bros group <laughs> on the platform. <laughs> Anyways, um, we're talking about it, um, and wondering which direction Metroid can go, and to be quite frank, I feel like if Nintendo's smart about it, they can definitely make them a, a proper, like Metro Prime Hunters, online multiplayer for uh, Metroid and not be so afraid. Because this is the thing. Nintendo's afraid that the next Metroid won't sell as well um, because the Metroid they released for the GameCube didn't sell that well. The one they really uh, Both, by the way. And then the one they released for Wii uh, so decently... But not as much as they wanted. Yeah, so, the Metro game Prime games have never sold that well. Yeah, they N- Nintendo has. But they've this, been reviewed like amazingly, though. Yeah, so yeah. Nintendo has a love hate relationship with Metroid, mm-hmm. and they don't realize that it is their fault. They're 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 outdated in their uh, pursuit of how they present the package and look what they did with galactic federation force oh my god i oh, oh, i didn't play it but from what i saw uh uh yeah That's all so I can say. um i feel like though they can do multiplayer to please those that want to have the powers of what's within the metroid franchise and interact and then just keep the lore, keep the story. Metro Prime story has never let anybody down. The, 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 everything about it has been amazing in every game. The backtracking, the discovery of it, the graphics, the the, the everything about it has been great. Um, it, the only downside that I would say was um, when they did uh, Corruption, the controls uh, as much as a light point and gun mm. um no i no <laughs> no that, that wasn't it chief um but what how do you feel about it and uh do you know you know are you into the metro franchise Is there i anything? i freaking love the metroid prime series the metroid series itself the 2d ones i didn't play a lot of them because i was really young when they came out like i didn't play part one i didn't play part two I didn't play Super Metroid until like it came out on like the Wii U Wii Virtual Console, the first Wii. Um, but I played Prime from the day it came out. I remember I went with my dad to Toys R Us on Christmas, and there was no Metroid Prime. I was either gonna buy Metroid Prime or Max, no, not Max Payne, uh, Dead to Rights on the GameCube. And I was like, damn, I don't see Metroid Prime. I think it's sold out. All right, let me get Dead to Rights. Dead to Rights is not that good of a game, guys. By the way. Um, so then my dad did the most amazing thing he's ever done for me ever. He went to the employee. He was like, yo, do you have some in the back? And I was like, they're not going to have it in the back. These guys, every time I ask them if they got something in the back, they never have it in the back. (laughs) They never have it in the back. (laughs) So my pops, my pops asked him, Hey, do you have Metroid prime in the back? He went to the back and he pulled out Metroid prime part one for the GameCube. And I was like, what? Pops, you're cool now for me, man. You're like the coolest Pops ever now. And um, so, yes, yeah, since that day, Metroid Prime fan to the death. Uh, with with part four, um, as far as uh, what I would want in it, I guess multiplayer would, would make me make most fans happy because it'll give the game longevity. Um, Damn. Yeah. But I will say that more importantly, it has to, it has to uh, adapt other innovations in the first person shooter genre like metro prime is not a dual stick shooter you have to target and you have to shoot um i think it should adapt a a a a dual stick shooter standard where like you you know you aim with the with the right analog stick and you move with the left and you can still target but i think you should you should cover you should move your 
your reticule to the enemy first, and then you can target them. Um, Metro Prime Hunters had a, had a decent. It had approach. a decent style. It had a decent style. I I remember it was just a little I bit. I I remember my hands cramping up because of the playing with the stylus. I had fat hands, so it was really it was kind of difficult. But I did have fun with it playing with my friends. I think yeah, you you should add multiplayer to it. Give it longevity. Give it something for like. Um, Twitch streamers to play it for a long time, um, no, but more importantly, the only thing. <laughs> more importantly, I say give it a- give it atmosphere and give it horror because if if you guys don't know the Metroid series itself was it was influenced by the Alien movie franchise, like Ridley in the game is based off the director of that movie Ridley Scott, and um, yeah. the whole point of the first couple Metroid games, even though I didn't play them when they came out. The whole point of them was that they were supposed to be kind of scary, like kind of like you're walking into the unknown because everything is like pitch black and it's like lava. It's like you're in a planet. You don't even know what the hell's going on. Um, I say give it give it a little bit of horror. Give it a little bit of mystery and scariness because even the Metroid Prime games in Metroid Prime 1, the first time you see a Metroid, the actual alien Metroid it's scary. Like the lights go off. You see them break out of their containers and you're like, holy crap, what the hell's going on? And then it gets stuck on your face. Like the thing in the alien movies like that, that was scary. I yeah, would, yeah. yeah. I make it scary. Cause I don't think Metro games have been scary for a while. Metro fusion had a little bit of horror in it, but not that much. Um, make it. I just want it to be scary. I want it to be dual stick shooters and I want it to, have a lot of um exploration now you can do kind of like the breath of the wild style where like oh that would be beautiful yeah we're like there's a lot of exploring there's a lot of all right i'm gonna find something strange in every couple steps like there could be a, a, a anything i could find i could run into a random boss by just walking around randomly like, like a full planet like instead of actually leaving the planet Exactly. I mean, you could leave a planet too if they got two planets that's open world. That'd be awesome. It doesn't even have to be open world, but at least random like stuff to happen if you go searching for it. Like, if I walk off the beaten path, what am I gonna find? Remember, Breath, right. of, the, Breath of the Wild was like, all right, I, I, I'm just walking around randomly. Holy crap! I walk on these rocks, and now it's a rock boss I gotta fight. You remember yeah, that, yeah. that 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 the guy? Yeah. So. Uh, 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 reward exploration. Re- reward walking off the beaten path. That's that, yeah. that's my main thing that I want. Horror walking off the beaten path, and more standard uh, first person shooter mechanics. Do you remember? Uh, I, I I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, but do you remember the first time you came across the the quote unquote, quote unquote ghost of the ancestors uh, in Metro Prime? Yes. I don't remember. That scared the crap out of me. You got to turn on the I, x-ray visors to see them. I legitimately got scared. Yeah. People don't even realize that Metroid, it was like a horror game. It was scary. It was supposed to be scary. Yeah. Like, you oh. you will you will be uncomfortable playing this game for the first time. And I want them to but keep that. that. That's, why corruption didn't, that's why Corruption didn't feel that scary. Corruption they, didn't feel scary, no. It had too much, too much talking. They had a lot of... They had a lot of characters, which I like. They had a lot of voice acting. But when you add a lot of voice acting, a lot of talking, it takes away the scariness of it. No, no, no. I think that I don't, I don't think that was, what, that, was, that was the problem. I think the problem was that they kept injecting it in between too many parts. Like, what about if you just did it in the beginning, then in, in another part? Like, after you're done, after a huge section. No, it would be like, okay, beginning, a little bit of section, talk. Then it's like, Another little section, someone's around. It's like, no, 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 no. Keep people away. Yeah. Keep yes. So <laughs> spread it out more. Spread it out more. Like, if there's going to be voice acting, make it so you don't see another talking character for a while. Yeah. Like Resident Evil games. Resident Evil games, you run into another human and it's like, oh, crap. Is there somebody alive in this crap? What the hell? How is he alive? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, how did you make it? <laughs> And people don't know Resident Evil stole stole its its Metroidvania style from Metroid. It it has the same system of like finding keys, finding uh, f- fighting bosses with with newly found items. Resident Evil was a Metroidvania game, and yeah, like 
a lot of horror games have stolen Metroid style. So yeah, take it back. Take it back to the to the horror roots of the of the series. Yeah, I would I would love that. I would also I would also love for them to um to if if they make it, you know, officially like the past, you know, prime games, make um a new a new enemy. Uh yeah. Don't, don't yeah. Stop using Ridley as the as the crutch. Totally agree. Or, or it can't have, be. They can't be Dark Samus either. We already fought Dark Samus too many times. No, but like, if you're gonna bring Ridley back, make it a legitimate way, not the Mecha. Rid- make it so that there's a scientist going. You know what? There's nobody else that gave Samus a, a bigger challenge than Ridley. We cultivate a cells of his corpse. Let's re and you revive it, and it's a new Ridley. And he did, maybe he doesn't even have an agenda against Samus. But then he develops something, you know, but make it more believable or make a new enemy because, like, it's getting tiring knowing what you're going to face. Yeah, right? yeah. You can't keep fighting Ridley every game. You can't keep fighting Kraid every game. It has to, they have to, there definitely has to be a new enemy that's 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 intimidating because Samus is a strong battle-ready person that has fought too many monsters that she's already too prepared for. It's like in video games when you play with a character that has been through hell and back in every game. It's like, what are they scared of? They're, they're, they're invincible. They can take anything on. So, yeah, she needs a threat that, that's a, 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 a new threat that's more intimidating than what she's faced before. Do you realize and this is, <laughs> Do you realize that Samus was the first woman in power? <laughs> she was. She was. I in have gaming. to say it. I'm sorry. I first. hate how people... There's never been a woman in power. Are you gonna ignore Samus Aran? Samus was the first uh, heroine that really, really was a, a symbol of, of female empowerment, and she still stands as a symbol of female power. Yeah, that played no games and it had nothing to do with gender. It was just, yes, I am a woman, but let me show you. Let me show you. Except for Metroid Other M, they made her a crybaby. Oh my god, let's not talk about Metro. Oh my I Lord. didn't play it, but people hate it. And I'm like, oh wow. Listen, I mean, let me explain to you why I hated it. The, I enjoyed the gameplay. People hate the gameplay. I enjoyed it because it was so simplistic. Here was the problem you, Samus has never, ever showed any signs of love interest and any signs of emotional weakness. Yeah, I mean, she saw if her you parents were, die when she was a kid. She's tough. If you, if you were going to introduce emotional attachments and love attachments, it had to be residual. It couldn't have been. It was just so shoehorned in. It didn't feel realistic. It just felt like woman here in certain emotions. So that's when I get. That's when I actually agree with the whole like you know thing that I'm not going to talk about. When, when they just shoehorn it in, like, yeah, you know, she's one and so emotional. It's like, no, no, she's never even shown a sign of that. She's always been strong and and, and capable, but whatever. Yeah, Other M was a tragedy, and it's really, I, they're never going to do it again. Nintendo knows, like, oh, God, that was bad. Why we did that? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So you 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 want to talk about this? Man, do you did you uh, manage to play uh, Monster Hunter Rise? Right? I did them? not, but I feel like you can say enough for the both of us. But I'm gonna play it tomorrow. I'm gonna play it's, it tomorrow. It's free, and it, I suggest you do. Yeah. 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 So, so let me tell you something. <laughs> I know you loved it. I know you loved it. I loved it, and I'm gonna tell you why. It was because. I don't know for those that are listening to the podcast. I don't. If, I don't know how many people are Monster Hunter fans, but the old Monster Hunter games were very uninviting to newcomers. What that means is that they were very, very, very difficult, very difficult. Um, and if you got into the community um, before World, you had to know your stuff or you had to grind the hours on end. And unfortunately, in the modern era, a lot of us don't have that kind of time to throw into a game. Even if you're a kid, mind you. Even if you're a little... 
a younger child, uh, you're not going to have that kind of like complexity of, I need to grind through this heavily. And so my concern was when they made a new Monster Hunter, if they were going to take a hybrid of World, which was a really easy version of Monster Hunter, and put a little bit of the difficulty of the older ones and infuse it. And voila, they did. <laughs> they, voila. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's just enough difficulty for you to go, I'm enjoying this. And it's just enough ease of access so that you can enjoy the story. So, um, also, it looks great on Switch. Yeah, yeah, man. We thought it was a Switch Pro game. That game is beautiful, even on base switch, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, for those of us that, do, for those of you that don't know, we 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 got the scoop. You know, Switch Pro is is out here. We're testing. <laughs> Word. Oh man, I wish. Uh, please, Nintendo. <laughs> please, God, please. Um, but uh, in conclusion, I, I I recommend it. It runs well. Um. I will. I will say though, the one hiccup was I played the. It's it's a demo, so I understand. I played the multiplayer and it was just way too laggy. Um, so I'm imagining that you know it was just because it was a demo. You know. Um, yeah, they got to fix that up before release. Nah, I hope so. I yeah, hope so. they will. They will. That that's Capcom's best selling franchise right now. Shout out to Capcom. I love Capcom. That's their yeah. best selling franchise right now. They'll, they'll they'll fix that before release. Wasn't there some, some some small controversy around Capcom lately? That, that they had a crazy work? leak a couple months ago, and also they they made new mandates for uh, YouTubers and streamers. Um, oh, that's what it yeah, was. They made new mandates. You can't show most of the cutscenes anymore. Um, I kind of get where they come from. They're not saying you can't play the game, but if you're gonna play the game on release week or release release month, don't show the whole cutscenes of the game. I don't know how strict they're gonna be with it. If they were gonna be like how Nintendo was when, like, a couple of years ago with with YouTube. <laughs> you gotta sign up to the Nintendo. <laughs> Thank God they got rid of that. But uh, I don't know. Capcom's kind of late to this, though. I feel like, I feel like if you were gonna make mandates about how people play your games or stream your games, you had to kind of come like a years ago and let it be known because uh, streamers are used to a certain standard where like. All right, it's cool if I play the whole game, if I show all the cutscenes, if I use the music from the game while I'm playing other games. Especially me, I love playing Capcom music during my streams. Um, yeah. So it's like, are you gonna do this now, like in 2021? Um, you think people are gonna listen? You think people? I don't know. Do you want people to stop streaming your games? Like, what do you what do you want out of this? I don't understand it. All they right. also said. Uh, emotes are an issue too. Yes, emo. I have a, a zero emote from Mega Man, which is my most used emote. Um, like uh, and there and people were, were have been telling me like, yo, Capcom's gonna come after you for that emote, and I'm like, yo, I don't know, let them do it, whatever, whatever. But why, why are they doing this now? Like, why, why put the time into this now? I. I have no answer. I don't know. I would have understood two years ago or three years ago or even five years ago. I remember when Persona came out uh, and Persona uh, Atlas was like, hey, don't show all the cutscenes or whatever for Persona 5. But now in 2021, come on. We're doing you a favor. We're keeping your games popular. <laughs> I, 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 I think they might be doing it simply because... They're trying to uh, tighten the news on uh, people that get away with um, streaming uh, whole bits. Like, you know that how there's YouTube videos that have... Um, it's not for Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter barely has story. It has a little bit, but not... not. Oh, my God. Let me go fucking uh, replay the, the ending of Monster Hunter. Mm. It has to be for, like, Resident Evil 8, which is coming out soon. And maybe they don't want people to show the whole ending because it's such it's such a surprise ending. But I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I love my zero emo. It's not going nowhere. Yeah, I it, let them let them do what they want. Yeah, I love my zero emo. Like, oh, oh, what are we fighting for? I love that. It's not going nowhere. 
<laughs> oh man. Um, okay, so we're gonna take a. So by the way, guys, if you got any questions, comments, topics you guys want us to uh, mention, hit us up on our social medias. Don't don't be afraid to do that. Um, yes. We're gonna go ahead and talk talk about three quick topics. We're not even gonna sit on them. Um, we had somebody that I don't know if they want me to reveal their name, but they asked me, "How do we feel? How do you feel about Red Dead coming to the Switch if it ever did?" Um, not a fan of Red Dead Two. I like Red Dead One, but I'm not a fan of of the way Rockstar makes open worlds now because it's kind of an open world, but the story's linear. After okay. Breath of the Wild, where like the story's not linear and you can go anywhere and do anything whenever you want, I don't want to go back to Hey, this is open world, but you got to walk here to do this. And then that guy's going to make you walk there to do that. And then you got to walk there to do that. No, Breath of the Wild changed the game. Rockstar needs to change and be more open with their open worlds. Okay. Um, and two more. Uh, and then somebody, I should have asked them if they want me to reveal their names like a noob. I didn't. Uh, how do you feel about new Mario Kart coming out for the Switch if it does? I would be happy with it, but at the same time, I don't need it. And Mario Kart is amazing. It's a deluxe is amazing. We technically don't need it, right? I don't need it. I'll buy it if they make it, but damn, I mean, <laughs> Mario Kart Eight Deluxe is is like the perfect Mario. It's the same thing with Smash Bros. Smash Ultimate is the perfect Smash. Uh, Mario Kart Eight Deluxe is the perfect Mario Kart. Let's see what they can do new. It's like what Sin was saying earlier, like. What are they gonna do new with it? Maybe, maybe expand on it if it really works that well, right? Don't make Smash Bros. Kart. I don't feel like playing with uh, Shulk in a in a in a racing game. Moving on, and lastly, uh, how would you feel about Shadow being in Smash Bros.? I don't care. Yeah, I don't care either. I don't care. I'd be more happy with Doctor Eggman, Robotnik, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Wait, Doctor Eggman. I'd be more happy with Eggman because he's a villain. He's the main villain of the Sonic series. And I do have this dream one day of them making like uh, a subspace emissary where all the villains come together in a story mode. Like Sephiroth, Ganon, Dr. Eggman, Dr. Wily from Mega Man. And you have to go. You remember how the story mode was in um, Melee? Where... Yeah. It was a kind of like an adventure mode. Man. It was an adventure mode. It was called adventure mode. My my bad. And you go through the actual games of the of the of the characters. So in Zelda's level, it was like a, a dungeon. Yeah, ding 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 ding. Yeah, ding, ding. I love that part. In in the in the F zero level, you had to run on the track where the cars were coming. Um, I would like it if like when when we go to another subspace emissary game. If they ever do that again, that it's not just a random suspect so emissary was kind of random. The villains were random. The, the the all this stuff was random. Even what was the new one in the in ultimate the the, the single player mode? Uh, not the, I was gonna say suspect no, no. Um, uh, oh crap. spirits a, spirits mode right? There it, it was a spirits mode, but it was like adventure still a light mode, light 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 light. Whatever it is. I don't like these random. Worlds. It was random stuff. Yeah, had nothing, I, don't, I don't want random worlds. I want hey, um, I'm I'm gonna pick Captain Falcon and I'm gonna go play in Mega Man's world, fighting people as Captain Falcon, or I'm gonna go as uh, Terry Bogard and I'm gonna go to Zelda's world and I'm gonna go fight Ganondorf at the end of that stage and he's the final boss. I'm gonna go as a Castlevania character. Go to the Castlevania stage and fight Dracula. Like they have the bosses, they have the villains. They just gotta make the levels. Mm. All right. Uh, you think you think we got enough time to make it to these last couple couple topics? We got all the time in the world, brother. I ain't got nowhere to be. So we got uh, we got Pokemon Snap had a trailer now. Bro, I love Pokemon Snap, and it's like the it's actually the corniest game ever. Right? Wait, wait, wait. I agree. It's so corny, but what? I, I don't mind taking pictures of Pokemon, especially if they're going to let you put it on social media. Social media is going to explode with Pokemon Snap pictures. It, I don't I don't understand why it is that it works. Is it because it's like random, quote unquote, animals that are Pokemon that you get to take it, pictures of? Yeah, everybody loves Pokemon. We learned that with Pokemon Go a couple years ago. 
and it's it's casual gaming it's like i'm just gonna take beautiful pictures of pokemon and put them on especially i know they're gonna let you do it a social media thing where you're gonna be able to put all your pictures on facebook and twitter and instagram i i that that has to be a thing so i mean it's already integrated into the concept exactly it's already integrated so that's that's without a doubt get ready for that guys get ready for your social media to be a thousand pictures of slow poke or b drill and all that jazz man it's it's happening doing the same thing over and over yeah doing the same thing but i, I, I uh-huh. i'm happy with it i'm I, I don't even need innovation in pokemon snap yeah, well, you know why that is, though, right? Because it, ha- it has been so long that there's no point. Maybe they could innovate in the next one, but right now it's just like, yeah, revamp. Just give us a new one. It's like Punch-Out. When Punch-Out came out for the Wii, they didn't really innovate, but they gave us better graphics and better controls, and that was it. And you're just still punching people. It's the same thing with Pokemon Snap. We're going to have better graphics. We're going to have social media integration. And you're going to have more Pokemon because now we have more than 150. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like um, if they're smart about it, they can also integrate it with the, with the mainstream Pokemon games and then maybe have an event where, oh, if you take a picture of a rare Pokemon, you can just transfer it to your Pokemon. So that's true. Oh, my God. That's perfect. That's perfect. Do it. Do it. Even integration with your, with your cell phone somehow. But Pokemon, there's gonna be Pokemon Go oh, integration because oh. people are still playing Pokemon Go in 2021. I, I was surprised, but it's happening. It's still growing. It's still going. I have friends that still play it now yeah. because of the virus, because of Corona. You could you could play Pokemon Go and you could still walk around in the game even though you don't leave your house. No, and it's growing. That's the funny thing. It's still growing. They have conventions though. At least last year they did. I mean, 2019 they did. But um, I'm I'm excited for Pokemon Snap. I, I mean, the kid in me is just joyous about it. It's too easy. It's like when you asked me earlier, what do people see in Animal Crossing? It's easy. It's 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 a social game. Pokemon Snap is almost uh, along those lines of like it's a social thing, where you you present what the pictures you took to other people. Oh, it has a social aspect to it. It's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> that was the wrong button. Uh, um, real quick, did you know that uh, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time actually is out? You know, I, I believe I believe it's out on Switch, and it got a pretty almost perfect score, eight eight eight. It got thirty two out of forty. I'm it's I'm not... trying to understand how Famitsu works, because Famitsu they have four reviewers, and each one gives them a score, and then they they total the score to uh. To what you call it? To uh, 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 an almost perfect score, and <laughs> I, 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 I gotta play this Pokemon, this uh, Pokemon, this Samurai Jack game because it actually looks good. It does look good, but yeah, it looked good when I first saw it. But I, 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 I'm curious as to how is it gonna work. I'm curious as to you know what what you know. I'm just curious. I, I'm talking about it as I saw the review and I saw the trailer and I've seen some gameplay. But I don't know much else. I definitely do want to play it. I know that Famitsu has a bias towards games that are either made in Japan or based in Japan. So I also don't trust the reviewing too well. Because I knew I know the Samurai Jack game didn't review too well in America. You're right. But Famitsu <laughs> is an institution in Japan where if Famitsu says a game is good, people will buy it in Japan. People will buy in Japan just because Famitsu said it was good. So I'm gonna look to that. Hold on. You know what? I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna look into that because you're right about that. I ju- I remember somebody saying that to me back when I was in Japan. Hold on. Yeah, Famitsu is an institution in Japan. Just like how we have IGN, people people trust IGN for some reason. Uh, and then there's people who are like, "Yo, IGN is crazy." Um, no, Famitsu is a, is definitely an institution in Japan. Um, but they definitely have a bias. There's definitely a lot of games that don't deserve perfect scores that have them in, in Famitsu. Uh, but uh, I, I will be happy the Samurai Jack game sells good because I actually like Samurai Jack a lot. I hope they make more video games of Samurai Jack. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the cartoon and I enjoyed the game, so I'm hoping they, 
they follow through with it and maybe in the future they make a sequel you know you yeah know I mean? yeah a sequel even if this game isn't that good maybe they can build upon it and make it better you know yeah 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 absolutely um i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and remove this little topic from here but i will touch on something so go for it uh, uh marv uh-huh what do you know about uh view buying and view buying on twitch i don't know too much about it because i'm poor <laughs> so i don't i don't really know i know it's done i know i know people do it i know people i know people pay for view bots so um there was a particular game that uh, the people had access to on twitch and um I know it's going to be vague, and I don't care what people think if I'm talking vague. And they're going to be like, oh, evidence presented. I'm not going to do that. Um, but this is the main reason why people like me, Marv, and others uh, use Twitch just to have fun rather than try to just explode and become something bigger. Because Twitch, as of you know this recording, they still allow people to be able to buy viewing. Um, there was a game that was released. Uh, and this unknown gamer just randomly had early access to it, and then all of a sudden they had thousands of viewers. And if you looked at the viewer list, a lot of the viewer name username was just blocked. Mm. And you know, I don't know about you, but that hurts me as a person that's been streaming on the platform for damn near a decade and change. And you know, uh, which is why. I am happy that I have the fan base that I do. I'm happy that you have the fan base that you do because we have loyal people that stick around with us and, and, and you know, have nothing to do with Twitch. But I hope that that changes in the future. And that's all I will say about that particular topic. Um, Your Twitch viewers got an email to tell them which uh, Twitch streamer they watch the most. Uh, well, you're at the top. You were at the top of some of those lists, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> that was a little weird. <laughs> I actually love that though. I actually love to see that, even with our small fan bases, the viewers we have are so loyal that they'll watch us more than watching like somebody in Smash Bros community who was huge. They'll watch us more than freaking what's that guy's name? Who's the number one Smash streamer right now? Number one Smash streamer, MK Leo. They'll watch us more than MK Leo. So. Yep. I, that's that's that that warms my heart to an extent that is unimaginable. Um, when, yeah. when um, you know, shout out to Taco, shout out to Alucard. They were like, "Look, Marv, you're my most watched streamer," and I'm like, "Man, I don't even care if I'm rich. The fact that you guys could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me, I appreciate that, man." You know. Just Jace posted on Twitch. He was like, yo, Marv, look, you're my most watched um, Twitch stream. And I'm like, damn, Jace, you could have been watching freaking, you could have been watching Ninja. Anybody, yeah. <laughs> you know, anybody. But you're here watching <laughs> little old me, man. I appreciate just, that. I, this is why, um, I don't know about you, how you do it. But um, when I stream, I usually have the, the stream manager uh, page open. Yeah. I take down the viewer aspect of it because I don't want to see how many viewers I have. I don't care for it. I just care for whoever shows up, interacting with them, and then having fun. That's what I care about. So I dig that, man. But Sin, I mean, you're you're famous. I don't I don't think you really under. Sometimes I feel like you don't understand how awesome you are. Sometimes though, <laughs> I remember when I first got to Twitch and I was a new streamer, and I I used to look at this website that shows you who's the top streamer for every game and of course i always looked at smash bros you were always in the top 10 streamers of smash bros when i first got a twitch yeah not, not anymore i stopped doing smash bros <laughs> i don't check it anymore because it will drive you crazy but... well it, it's not even that is that the community so so the back in the smash 4 days um the reason i thrived on it was because um the community was dying and and so we had like a very niche amount of people um, keeping the Twitch Smash 4 community alive. And now that Smash Ultimate is out, um, after all the controversy and whatnot, the individuals that are supposed to host each other, hey, rate each other, support each other, they no longer do that. They stick to themselves and create their own echo chamber community. And 
Um, I've decided I don't want to be a part of that anymore. So I'll still stream Smash Bros. whenever I feel like it. And I still support individuals like you that I know from the old guard, yeah. but I no longer care about that. Mm -hmm. Do you still raid random streamers? Um, no. I yeah, now I, I don't do it either. I, I don't bother with that at all. I've be I've raided random streamers and I, I expect I don't expect a lot. I just kind of feel like you should be like, hey, bro, thank you. I appreciate this. And I've kind of gotten responses like, oh, OK, you rated me. OK, thanks, I guess. Yeah, actually, that's actually why I stopped. I had um, it happened to me consecutively. Um, I don't know how many days in a row, but, you know, I can literally find it. Um, I rated someone after I had 30 some viewers because somebody else rated me yeah. and then just looked and went and just kept going. Yeah. And, and I was like, you're a small streamer. You should at least be a little appreciative. Even if I'm coming in with not that many viewers, I mean, I'm still adding to your, to your, um, viewer list. I'm still helping you out. These are, these are viewers that could become long time. Uh, some of the raids I've had have led to long time loyal fans. So it's like, why are you? Twitch is not helping because Twitch now made it so that there's some things that you have to do uh, to be able to get um, an alert or you have to have an X amount of people to come through with a raid or a host for you to get um, viewership. And even further, which is the part that really does upset me extremely, uh, let's say uh, you raid someone or somebody raids you. Uh, let's say they bring 200, 300 people. Uh, those 200, 300 people have to re refresh your page and remove the refer the reference the question that are e equals raid thing from the from the web you know the web page because if not it doesn't count the viewership. Yeah, I mean. Twitch has gotten it's 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 risen in popularity. Um, when I started, a lot of my viewers were like, "I never used Twitch before because I came from YouTube." They're like this is my first time on Twitch because you came to Twitch, and now Twitch is huge. Twitch is way bigger than it was in 2016 when I started, and it's a it's a inf it's a inflated market almost. So now well, it's like we don't have to we don't have to help small streamers anymore because there's 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 like giants on the platform now. Yeah, that that just infiltrated, kind of like the YouTube infiltration when Vine happened. Yeah, there's giants on the platform, so we don't have to really care about the little guys anymore, and it it, it kind of sucks. I remember when I was doing Smash Four days, I was in the. You were in the top tens. I was in the top thirty. I was in. I was like number thirty-five consecutively, and I was proud. I was like, "Man, I'm I'm thirty-five in the whole world of everyone right. streaming Smash. I'm number thirty-five, and I think the most I made it to was like number fifteen. The, I, the reason the reason I can talk about it calmly now is because I've had enough time to digest it. But there was a point in time that I was the number nine top spot in the streaming platform that, and I had a decent number of viewers and then Twitch, Twitch has over the time in, uh, done things. I don't want to go into details, done things that makes it difficult for you to accrue viewership. So I, I think that'll be a separate topic for a separate time. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, I want to touch on this last topic that, uh, uh, not just just not just about Square Enix, but just in general, because of what's happening with the pandemic. Um, Square Enix is talking about uh, how uh, bravely. By the way, do you know about Bravely Default? Of course, it has Brave in the title, so I have to pay attention to it. I gotta go. I gotta go. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, Bravely Default is like a new IP that's been around for a bit. You know, it's, it's still new though. Probably like um, five years old, right? Five years old at this point. Yeah, yeah. Started on the 3DS. Yes, and Bravely Default is supposed to come out on the Switch, but they've had to delay it due to the pandemic. Um, and uh, that that should let you know uh, an insight into why there's some gaming droughts because it is really hard now to work on a game because of the pandemic. Like you would think, right? Like, oh, okay, well, let's just work on a game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, through online, you know, we could just share files and 
edit and, and, and but it's actually not that easy you kind of do need to be next to each other to work at home you 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 you, you don't your brain doesn't enter work mode right away and it's not in work mode all the time so developers can work at home but it's not usually the most effective way to make a game yeah yeah absolutely so you know i i, I just want everybody to be aware you know uh, it, now is the best time to buy games that uh have been out for a while that you weren't you didn't buy because you either forgot or were looking to buy but then newer games came out it's, it's super important to know that you know and uh make sure you uh <clears throat> invest in us you know like we're right here we're, we're gonna we're gonna make a video game soon it's gonna be yo it's gonna be the best video game ever it's gonna be <laughs> jeff keely is gonna present us at the game awards not awkwardly hopefully not awkwardly <laughs> i don't know if he knows any other way to do it <laughs> The gnarly sin experience. Word. Oh, no. <laughs> maybe maybe we should just uh maybe we should just do a a video game where we dance, like dance dance revolution and then make it so that it's it's playable. You know, <laughs> was it you yeah, a couple weeks ago when we were doing the charts, just dance was still in the top twenty, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So if we make a dancing game, it's almost guaranteed to make money. Because if Just Dance is still making money, holy crap! It's funny though; you can't do it on Twitch that much. Twitch you, will be like, "Oh, you can't rhythm." That's another thing. Like, how does how do people how do people buy Just Dance if their favorite streamers can't even play it that well that much? You can't play Just Dance on Twitch. Explain that to me. Like, how who who's buying Just Dance in twenty twenty one? <laughs> Explain that to me. And the mechanics. All I know is, and this is something that I find interesting. We should have an update to some of the laws that are old from like way beyond yonder years of like music and all of that. But nope. Let's just act like you can't play X song. You know what? That's okay. Come to my stream. I'll play Kiss songs from the seventies. How about that? That rule with the music thing, I remember when it first came out, people were like, yo, Marv, you're screwed. You're not going to play able to play music on your stream anymore. Yada, yada, yada. And I was like, I'm not scared of that jazz. And I play whatever song I want. Nothing happens. It, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to tell people do whatever you want in your stream with music, but I do it. And I don't, I, nothing bad happens to me. I don't know. The reason, the reason it isn't happening yet is because. Uh, Twitch is it's still caught on litigation. That's all. Um, also, I play a lot of video game music, which is a lot of non-copyrighted songs because old retro games don't have a lot of songs that are copyrighted in the YouTube and Twitch system. I'm not playing like Lady Gaga on my stream. You know By the I mean? way, that's a topic that we're talking about uh, next time because guess what? Video game OSTs are going to be a, a thing. They're gonna be they're gonna be banned soon. Uh, it's a discussion. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. I do play like really really old OSTs, but I mean, if it does happen, <laughs> at least at least I play a lot of Smash Bros. where the game itself um has a lot of the songs that I like. So I mean, I'm whatever comes in the horizon, I'm with my fist up, man. I'm a warrior. I'm not worried about. Is it is it a Courtney Love song? I've never listened to Courtney Love. <laughs> I've never listened to her. But you have, but you have made love to a woman named Courtney. No, I haven't. Damn. <laughs> I know a chick named Courtney, and I could have, but I didn't. Wow. She was kind of weird. Well, was it because the patch didn't allow you? The patch in my soul didn't allow me to. All right. <laughs> Real talk, it didn't. My patch in my soul didn't allow me. My heart has a patch on it. It's not just on my face. It's in my heart. It's in your heart too. Sin, your mask is in your heart, bro. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I can't deny that. You guys realize how awesome Sin Cara is, bro. Sin Fanta is, bro. He's Sin Fantastic, man. You I'm so excited. So what do you tell you excited about that you know of? Because I'm telling you right now, all I keep hearing from fellow people which i don't care for the game but i i might have to get it because people try to uh it's uh wild rift league of legends wild rift i don't know much about league of legends or mobas in general 
Me either. Yeah, I don't have a lot of. I don't. I don't know a lot about PC gaming. I have PC and I have games on it. I just don't. I don't feel like I can build that much of an attachment to my PC games because. I don't know. It's just like I gotta, I gotta double click here. I gotta right click here. I gotta install this. I gotta do this, and I gotta do that to play them. What about uh, Monster Hunter Rise? Are, are you are you willing to get it, or it doesn't hold your attention? Like that? What 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 did you say? What game? Uh, Monster Hunter Rise. Do you think you play it? Uh, I'll probably play it to rock with you a little bit, but I don't know because I it kind of has MMO kind of vibes to it. So, like I said, I don't not super I don't want to get super stuck on a game where if my friends don't play it anymore, am I still going to play? I don't want to play with strangers. <clears throat> Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. You guys stopped playing it. I stopped playing it too. We all gave up. You're wrong about that. You still play it? Yes. You're lying to me. I don't see you stream it. I don't like to stream it. <laughs> Listen, man, Crystal Chronicles really disappointed me last year. It was my most disappointing game of the year because it had the potential to be amazing. And uh, it ended up not being amazing, but... Well, you know what's upsetting? They have new DLC, new areas to play in, and yet you still have to... Make a lobby, quit the lobby. Oh, but no, they fixed that. Um, You don't have to stop the lobby. You can actually alter the lobby while you're inside the lobby with the people. But still, why not let e- e- people to play together, do through the- through- through- through everything together? It's, it's They had too many ambitions where they're like, this is going to be cross-play with phones, PlayStation, Switch. And uh, honestly, on mobile, people can't. At least developers don't think that a mobile player will want to stay in a party for longer than one dungeon. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. I remember you saying that. The mm-hmm. mobile, the mobile thing is what really killed it because they really think mobile is bite-sized gaming. I'm gonna play one dungeon and I'm gonna leave. I don't really want to play this forever because I'm just I'm on the train in Japan and I'm gonna be home by the time this dungeon is done. Mm-hmm. So there was really no idea of like long-term adventuring with friends because you know they're, they're thinking about the japanese market japanese people are always on the go they're always moving they love handheld gaming but they love it in bite-sized chunks yeah, yeah. not necessarily long-term adventures like that but but um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what comes on the pipeline there's there's so many games to talk about there's so many options and i'm right, right in front right now i'm just ready for monster hunter rise i'm still playing doom eternal and um, we'll, we'll see what comes down the pipe. Monster Hunter Rise seems like the biggest game of 2021. I don't know what else is coming out. Metro Prime. We hope. We hope. But there's no com- there's no <laughs> solid there's no solid uh, announcements. Um, so, you know, you know, I got I got a solid announcement to make myself though. Oh. oh, oh, oh. So for those that don't know, <clears throat> if you guys didn't know. If you need a professional job done for a podcast, go to Bravery Studios. It is the best place to go. Best equipment, best best everything, best host. Make sure you go to Bravery Studios. That's where you get what you need. Bravery up. Thank you. Saying you were you're a gentleman and a scholar, my boy. Yeah, man. We uh we we're at the end of the of the pod, huh? I kind of feel like tonight I could have went for like forever. I could have talked to you. I could have talked to you so like six a.m. in the morning probably. I could probably keep going. Don't get me started. We're out of news though, but definitely, um, th- this podcast feels good. It feels good doing this, man. <laughs> I did. I did want to say uh, lastly, guys, if you got any questions, commentaries, suggestions, uh, you know, feedback, criticisms, please let us know in any of our social medias. Um, let us know if we suck, man. Yeah, let us know if we suck. I, I don't think we suck. I think we're like awesome. I think we're the most best podcast. Yeah, you know, we lick. I mean, wait, what? Uh, anyway, so, you know, <laughs> with that being said. <laughs> Listen, man, we're, 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 we're awesome. We're jazzing awesome, man. So definitely follow us on Apple. We're, we're on Apple now. Follow us on Spotify. We got Apple, man. 
we're on Apple. We got Apple, and it was crazy. It was like, Sin was like, yo, we need to get on Apple. I was like, I'm going to do this for us. I went crazy, and I was like, we got an Apple. I was like, yeah, man, we got an Apple. For those asking, by the way, I will be, you know, soon, soon, soon. I will be helping uh, uh, Marv with more uh, clips from the live stream. I know some of you will be like, well, where, where can we watch it live? We're not technically going to be doing live videos, but I will be uploading more uh, live clips uh, the second I get a chance. Because you got to remember, this young man right here is putting in a lot of work. So you'll catch me on that soon. I feel like almost like um, um, I want to play clips from our podcast during my stream. Like, you know, on the waiting screen when you go to take a take a piss or whatever, play like a clip in the podcast. I also have to add the tab for podcast on the bottom of my Twitch stream too. Yeah, I did that already. I got <laughs> I I got I haven't done that yet. I got to add that. I'm um, promoting you from without you knowing. <laughs> you're promoting us, man. This ain't just my podcast. It's the Mask and Patch boy. This, this is about this is about your awesome beard that I can't grow. <laughs> I can barely grow. My sides don't come in that deep. My that. my front is like perfect, but you, you don't want the sides, please don't. The sides are dope. I like the sides. I I would grow it if I could. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, I watched I watched the Completionist. You ever watch the Completionist on YouTube? Yes. Shout yeah. out to him, and his beard is so perfect, and he uses it like a like in his intro where like he powers up, and his power he his first form is without the beard. He's clean shave. And then when he hits Super Saiyan, his beard grows like perfect. <laughs> I'm like, man, I wish I could do something like that. But that's so much planning. Like I have to record it while I'm clean shave. <laughs> and then I have to um, record it again when I grow the full beard. <laughs> He's good, though. I like, I like the completion. He's been on YouTube for like 15 years already. Jeez, that's that's commitment right there. He was the he was one of the OG game channels. I think when when back then there was only like screw attack, smosh games. I don't know. YouTube used to suck with gaming back in the day. Oof. Before yeah. like 2010. We had PewDiePie. <laughs> no, I think PewDiePie was 2010 and up. I don't know if he was before 2010. I know his downfall was like 2015. I wonder why. He 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 hired these uh, Indian kids to say something about Jewish people. No, do you remember that bridge moment? <laughs> the bridge? No, I don't. I don't remember the bridge. What was the bridge moment? I remember the bridge moment where he dropped a a, 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 a word starting with the N. Oh, that's right. You're right. You're right. You're right. PewDiePie is crazy. <laughs> PewDiePie is crazy. Uh, oh Jesus! Oh um, man! So many years in the cr creative creator community, because you know we're creatives and we're we're content creators. Um, we've seen so many icons come and go, fall and rise, that it's kind of like, whoa, man, I, I kind of like the safe space that we're in sometimes. Well, so the thing that, that worries me for the future is that there's people that can do the most heinous things. <laughs> Look at our <clears throat> Anyway, uh, heinous things and uh, go away for a couple of years or months and then they can come back and still have a family. Uh, yo, because people are fickle, bro. People will forget. Um, people will forget crimes against like people, and and I don't know. It, it's just how fan base. Even in like music, in music, it's the same thing too. Like when you're on top, you think no one can stop you, and you're like at like a level, a, a form where like everyone's listening to you. And then when you fall, you're like, I'm never gonna get back on top. Or when you make a mistake, you're like, they're never gonna forgive me. And then and they're like, you just disappear for a couple of years. They will forgive you. Yeah, and then you still have a fan base. <laughs> you still have a fan base. R. Kelly has a fan base. I don't condone anything to do with R. Kelly. I cannot believe that he still has a fan base. But he released music like a year ago, and people were still brought it. Like I was like, how? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to save my life here. I'm, I'm trying, trying to my save life. I'm done with this interview. <laughs> I'm fighting for my life. Yo, killing me with this. <laughs> Yo, it's it's crazy. It's crazy how fickle fans can be. But shout out to my loyals. Shout out to Sin's loyals. Like we love you guys. <laughs> and we're gonna end this podcast, man. All right.
right, ladies and gentlemen, that will be it for the podcast. Thank you so much for everybody that's listened. Make sure you catch us on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you catch us on Spotify. The clips will be up anytime soon on YouTube. Make sure you check out me on Twitch.tv, Infanta, Infanta, everywhere else. And I'm Naughty Marv. Bravery Arcade on Twitch. Bravery Arcade on YouTube. Bravery, uh, Gnarly Marv on social media. This has been one of the best episodes. Yo, Sin is a god. Sin fantastic. No, no. <laughs> Wait, we were supposed to play a music game. What happened to Oh, we should have done that. We, we for- should have done that. We forgot about it. Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it set up next time. I'm sorry about that. Okay, I, I got you. I got you. Next week we're doing this, the music game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a good weekend. Take care of each other. We'll see you on the next one. And as always, mission complete. Complete. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We await your return, brave hearts.